Hi guys, welcome back. So let's talk New Zealand. Here at the end of 2020, just reflecting on their year, obviously it was a strange year with Covid, uh, but the games they did get in were a real mixed bag and they were at a bit of a crossroads. Obviously they finished the 2019 World Cup in a disappointing fashion. However, you know, they made the change, they went to Ian Foster and they haven't really found their feet yet. Although there's loads of talent, it really isn't a problem with talent in New Zealand. We've seen the strength of their domestic game and the players are, are definitely there. But how does Foster put them together? What tactics does he use? What mentality does he go for? It's going to be fascinating. So let's have a look at the results from this year. We had the 16-0 draw with Australia, which was a bit of a, a wake-up call. Then they came back and won very nicely, 27-7. Um, then a huge win against against Australia. And one of the problems of this year is can happen is they played Australia probably too much. But anyway, huge win against Australia, 43-5. Then the big shock lost 24-22, which was a you know you'd think a bit of a wake-up call. But then they go into Argentina, and I've obviously made a video about this Argentinian game. And Argentina pull out the game of their lifetime for their first ever win against the All Blacks. And the All Blacks definitely were slightly complacent in that game for sure. 25-15 uh, to Argentina. But then the All Blacks come roaring back, absolutely decimating Argentina, 38-0. So, you know, a real up and down. Clearly they can beat those guys that they played this year quite handily. But also they're capable of taking their foot off the gas getting it wrong tactically as well, maybe selection-wise. So one of the interesting things I want to talk about is what's the best All Blacks 15 going into next year, looking to build to 2023? Because there's some strengths there, there's a few weaknesses, there's some pitfalls. It's going to be interesting to know what you guys think uh, and what players you think they should go for. But here we go, into the front row. I think they stay with Joe Moody, certainly. He's absolutely amazing, absolutely their first choice. But at 31, is he going to make the next World? Cup I don't know possibly not that will leave a big hole at some point so they're gonna have to think about that in the near future at hooker you know three obvious really good choices I'd go for Cody Taylor you know established very good player 29 years old could make the next World Cup Dane Coles almost certainly won't at 33 um, Amua, 23, we want to see more of him for sure but Taylor for now and Lau Lala rounding off that front row in the second row, well, we've got a returning Brody Retallick in 2021. And I haven't seen enough from uh, Tui Palutu, uh, Scott Barrett and the youngster Vai uh, to say that they should take over from him or Whitelock indeed. So I think Brody Retallick at 28 years old will come straight back in and probably make a big difference. Uh, Sam Whitelock, will he make the next World Cup? Maybe. I keep expecting him to slow down, but I haven't seen it yet. Um, so those two continuing their famous combination, who's going to break through from those other guys? I'm not sure. Vai needs a lot more time, I think. To Peluso and Scott Barris are both you know, strong guys, physical guys, but I don't know. So I'd like to know your view on that or if there's anyone else you think should break through. Now, one of the hardest areas for New Zealand is the back row. Now, they've got Ardi Surveyor, who is an amazing player. And the question is, where do you play him? You could play him at 6, 7 or 8. But, of course, you've got Sam Kane as the captain at 7. Now, to drop Sam Kane would be huge because you're dropping your captain. Plus, he's given his all. He's played well. Um, I think he's a good uh, leader, a good role model. But, you know, come 2023, is, you know, 30, 31 years old, is Sam Kane going to be the best seven in New Zealand? I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but for now... Obviously, you need to stay with him because he's the captain. I think he you knows he's doing a decent enough job uh, in fairly difficult circumstances at times. Um, An Ardi Surveyor, then, where does he play? Six or eight? Well, I think you need to bring in some new blood. Uh, they've, you know, favoured Akira Yuani at six. Although I'm just not convinced world class wise against some of the others in the world if he quite stacks up. So I'd put Ardi Surveyor at six. And then the young Hoskins Satutu, 22 years old, got just talent coming out of his ears. We don't know how good he's going to be, but he could be amazing. Let's surround him with the experience of Surveyor and Kane and give Satutu a really good run at eight. Give him some time in the shirt. 
I'm very happy with that as the back row going forwards, but we'll see what they do. I mean, there's other guys that could come in. Uh, Papa Lee could definitely come in. He's got a lot of talent. Boucher I really like, but you know we haven't seen him break through yet. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Now, one of the sticking points they will have is at nine. They've got you know two very established guys. Aaron Smith, best in the world at the moment, but he's 31. Will he make the next World Cup? <laughs> Possibly. I don't know, he might slow down a bit. TJ Perinara is a bit younger at 28, but you know, he, I think we've seen at times he's not quite Aaron Smith. Brad Reb Webber's a good player, but he's 29. So they will have to start thinking about who they're gonna drop from the squad and which young nines they're gonna bring in. That's gonna be a big call. Do they think that Smith or Perinara is gonna make it to the next World Cup? I don't know. Big decisions going on there. Talking of big decisions, what are they going to do at 10? Well, for me, there's three guys who are the talent of the generation. Uh, Mwanga, Bowden Barrett and Damien McKenzie are all fantastic rugby players just in general. Um, but who do you play at 10? Well, I think Richie Mwanga has shown brilliant things at 10. He's also shown a bit of vulnerability. But I, I just don't know. I think until... A new fullback emerges. I think I would stick with Mwanga at 10, uh, Bowden Barris at 15, maybe rotating with Damien McKenzie at 15, and then you have a very similar theme in the team the two playmakers, a very quick playmaker at 15, plus he can step into 10 as well if needed, gives you flexibility on the bench. Um, I'm not 100% comfortable with that but I think at the moment that's the way to go until we get new players coming through putting pressure on. Um, looking at the centres, well Anton Leonard Brown I think has got the 12 sewn up, been very consistent, very good. He's 25 years old, who does he go through, uh, go with as his partner? Well I think you need to stick with Goodhue as the partnership long term, both 25, could really build a good partnership. Uh, you know, got a good balance of skill, strength between them. You know, people, you know, we've got Rico Ioane, who's been very good at 13. I do have question marks, maybe on temperament, potentially. Lumapi comes and goes. Maybe his time's gone, I don't know. Um, would he have to play 12, really? Not sure, let me know. The one guy I, I really want to keep an eye on, who got injured, unfortunately, recently, uh, was Aynor. I think he's got a super talent, very smooth player, Rolls-Royce of a centre in the making. So keep an eye on him. But I'll stick with uh, Leonard Brown and Goodhue. And in the back three, now, as my friend Zach uh, always keeps telling me that, you know, the back three is a very precarious occupation in New Zealand because it keeps getting changed. And indeed, we had Bridge and Severin Reese in the last World Cup, and they may not even feature going forward. So I think Caleb Clark, 21 years old, what a physical talent he is. And if they get him right, he could be a world beater for sure. Needs plenty of time experience, but what a player. And then if Bowden Barrett's going to stay at 15, I have to have Will Jordan in the team. He looks like a great All Black in the making, only 22. Start him on the wing for now. Will he take over at 15 at some point? I think that's a strong possibility. And then that frees up some options as well around him. But that's where I'd go. So Bowden Barrett 15, Will Jordan and uh, Caleb Clark on the wings. Okay, so that's my team, guys. Uh, let me know what you think of it. Who would you change? You know, there's some tight calls there. There needs to be a slight look towards 2023 already. Maybe not some changes right yet, but also in the near future, they're going to have to make a few more changes. Because um, talent's not a problem for the All Blacks. They've got plenty of players, but they need to start putting some caps in some youngsters now. The one fear I have for them is they put too many caps in players who just aren't quite good enough. And then when they come to the next World Cup, they're just not quite good enough again. So they have to have a real think about which of this massive talent pool are going to be world beaters going into 2023. Let me know what you think and your 15s and I will see you next time.